morning, Church of the Living God. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning as we share from the Word uh, of God. We are talking about uh, Christian homes and uh, marriage. Today, allow me to speak about uh, toxic families. Uh, in our different homes, we have got uh, various people with different minds and uh, different thinkings. And uh, you will always hear people say, families are not the same. People in the home are not the same. People in the family are not the same. You drive in town, uh, you pass through the various suburbs that you see in town. The suburbs are of uh, the same level, whether high density or low density, they are classed the same. But if you look at the houses, you'll notice that the houses there are not on the same level. Yes, the suburb is at the same level, but the houses there are not at the same level. Some houses look bigger than the others. Some houses look more beautiful than the others. Some houses look more recent than the others. Some houses look well kept than the, than the others. So you would notice that these are variations that you would find. When you come to homes in the house, you would notice that there is one of the family members who is a medical doctor, one of the family members who is a cleaner. There is one of the family members who has got more money than the other family members, but they all come from the same family. You would also notice that there are some who are taller, there are some who are shorter, but they are from the same family. You would also notice that there are some who may be uh, soft-spoken, and there are some who speak aloud. There are some who choose to live a secluded life. There are some who choose to be found in a group of many people. So these are people from the same family, but different uh, thinking. And then at the end of the day, because of such variations, characters and behaviors will vary within the family. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 to, say, to 10, reads as follows. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The Lord search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. May God bless the reading of his word, shall we pray. Our God and our Father who art in heaven, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come to church. As we go through your word, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us. Search our hearts and search our minds. So that, O oh Father God, if there is anything that may hinder our salvation, may you remove it in Jesus' name. At times we may be in denial. We ask, O oh Heavenly Father, that you may help us to realize our folly so that we may confess our sins and live a holy life. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. First Kings chapter 21 verse 1 to 29, the Bible says, some time later there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. This is a very sad scenario of a toxic family. A family that is in authority. A family that has possession. A family that is rich. A family that has got people at their disposal. A family that says to this one, run, and he runs, and this one jumps, and he jumps. And we have a situation here whereby Ahab sees the vineyard of Naboth, and he is jealous of it. And he says, I want to take it to myself. 
And uh, Naboth refuses and he says, I cannot do this because this is an inheritance of my family. And Naboth goes back home angry. He sleeps and he cries like a baby and refuses to eat. And his wife says, what has happened to you? And he says, this man called Naboth has refused to give me his vineyard. And the wife says, don't you worry. I will take care of this situation. I will write a letter and send it out so that people will know that Naboth had sinned against God and the king. And it went according to plan. Naboth was killed for his vineyard. And at the end of the day, when Naboth is dead, uh, Ab goes and possesses the vineyard and takes it to himself. And when he has done that, he thinks he has made it. But the prophet of God comes to him and says, you have done a wrong thing because you have sinned. Your family will die and everyone else in your family will die because of the sin that you have done. Fortunately, Naboth realizes his sin, confesses, and God hears his prayer. But still the consequences of his sin live to be in his house because his family is to die being eaten by dogs and uh, birds. Toxic family. An evil family. This is not God's ideal family. God wants a happy family. God wants a loving family. God wants caring families. The definition of a toxic family. A toxic family is one with people who are unnecessarily nasty, mean, or contemptuous. It goes on to say they frequently engage in gaslighting, making you feel like your feelings or memories aren't valid or true, or blaming you for things they did. They own problems with substance abuse or mental health, suck the energy out of your relationship. This is uh, how toxic people are. This is how uh, toxic uh, families are. They are always engaging in fights and quarrels every time. They don't want peace close to them. Whenever there is peace, they want to bring in a uh, conflict. They are always there for gas lighting. They want veiled fires every day. Lightning, sparks, and thunderstorm is the characteristics of uh, their lives. As we further on look at the characteristics of a toxic family, you'll notice that they are always speaking negatively or falsely about uh, others. And the Bible says, thou shalt not uh, uh, testify falsely against your neighbor. We see Jezebel saying to uh, Ahab, let's say to the people that Naboth has spoken evil against God and the king. This is what a toxic family is like. They want to negatively and falsely speak about others, bringing in information that is not true about other people. They are jealous of uh, what uh, they see. Uh, we see uh, David looking at Uriah's wife in First Kings chapter 11, verse 2, and he says, then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her. Toxic people are jealous of what they see. They are jealous of other people's things. They want those things to themselves, just like Naboth, who saw the vineyard of, uh, sorry, just like Ahab, who saw the vineyard of Ahab, and he says, I want this vineyard and use it 
for my own use and plant vegetables in it. Toxic people are abusive. They always have uh, negative uh, things to say about uh, other people. And not only that, they want to see you dead. And this is exactly what Jezebel did when he saw, when she saw that she failed to convince Naboth and get his vineyard, she made sure that uh, he is dead and surely uh, Naboth died. Uh, this is not only the only situation that we have. We also have the situation of uh, Mordecai who was supposed to die because he stood for his faith. Haman says, uh, let's create some colors when he was being convinced by his own wife. Let's read uh, Esther chapter 5, verse number 14. The Bible says, his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends told him, have them build a gallows 50 cubits high and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then go to the banquet with the king and enjoy yourself. The advice pleased Haman, and he had the gallows constructed. This is another toxic family. Haman wants Mordecai to worship him every time he goes through the gates of the palace. And Mordecai refuses. And he says, it is only God in heaven that I'm going to worship. I cannot worship you, uh, Haman. And Haman goes home. He reports the matter to his wife. And the wife says, don't you worry. How can you be uh, 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 abused by this uh, your uh, servant, have gallows built up for this man and having hanged up. And after that, go to the king's palace, eat and enjoy yourself. Can you imagine? Somebody wants to go out and enjoy themselves when someone else has died. Toxic people don't care whether you are dead or alive. They can party, enjoy themselves, eat and be merry when other people are mourning the death of their loved ones. Toxic people do not want to be corrected or rebuked. Whenever you get to them and tell them they are wrong, they get angry. If you read 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, there is still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. He is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. He is a king who refuses to be rebuked he says, this prophet, I don't like him because whatever he says, I don't like it. We have the same scenario where John tells Herod that what he has done is wrong to take his brother's wife. And uh, Herodias is also not happy because of John and she sees to it that John is killed so that uh, there will not be a person who will continue to speak against him. What causes people to be toxic? What causes families to be toxic? People become toxic because of the challenges that they meet at work, at home, or at school. Some have troubles with friendship or other relationships e.g. marriages. There are some people who become toxic because of uh, health concerns or uh, emotional distress. Some people are toxic because of uh, financial challenges. They are failing to make a breakthrough in life. They are always in debt, owing, and they never make profit in life. Some people 
are toxic because they are failing to improve financially, academically, or even at work. Some people become toxic because they are victims of child abuse. The memories of the, their childhood is coming into their adult life, and they become abusive or they become toxic because of the life that they lived before, and uh, this is tormenting and haunting them day and uh, night. People become toxic because they come from broken homes or broken families. They never got the love or the attention that they so needed when they were young. And when they are old, they don't see any reason of love and care because they never got that in their childhood. People are or become toxic because they come from negligent families where father and mother were present, but they denied their children the right to education, food, shelter, and uh, parental care. Some people become toxic because they come from a uh, humble background, uh, poverty-stricken families, and when they see other people making progress in their lives, it angers and hurts them, and they become toxic because they want to reduce them down to, uh, to their level. The other thing that makes people toxic is failures in life generally. You wanted to become a medical doctor and you failed outright all the classes, and when you see other people becoming medical doctors, it hurts you so much and you don't like them. You wanted to become a pilot, but you had a challenge with mathematics. And when you see pilots flying in the air, you wish they would fall down because you failed to become a pilot. First Kings chapter 13, verse number 18, the Bible says, The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet, as you are. And an angel said to me by the word of the Lord, Bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying. Toxic people want to bring others down because they have failed in life. This is an old prophet who was once upon a time a prophet. But because of his sinful life, because of his sinful lifestyle, he failed to become a prophet unto death. So he sees a young prophet who has done big and mighty miracles. A prophet who spoke and the altar was torn apart. And when this news gets to him, he says, I want to see this prophet. I want to bring him down because he cannot make this progress when I have failed in life. Toxic people, toxic families want to bring others down because they failed to achieve that which was achieved by others. I remember when I was um, doing my, just after my olive, or when I was doing my O-levels, things didn't go well with me. When I was uh, doing my third term, my tuition was not paid, my fees was not paid, I failed to attend class, I failed to write my exams. And, um, Eventually, I managed to write some of the remaining exams after my parents paid the, the fees. And uh, I remember when the results came, I passed what I had written and some of the things I failed because I didn't attend class. And uh, when we were collecting results, my friends had to go on and do their A-levels at that time. And I could not because I had failed. I did not meet the required subjects at that time. And it made me angry. And I was toxic. Whenever I would see A-level students in their A-level uniforms with their blazers in ribbons, it would make me angry because I had failed to achieve and get to their level. You know, you see them and you wish that uh, something could happen. Maybe schools will close and they are delayed. You catch up with them. You, you, you wish they could fail and be like you and you catch up with them somehow because you have failed to reach the standard or the level 
that those people are at. Thank God I managed to write, passed, and went on and did a level, and I'm at the same level with them today. What does the church say? People who are toxic know that they are toxic. Some, they don't know that they are toxic. Some people with toxic traits don't realize that their behavior impacts others. You can be a good person with bad traits. While you may not be influencing other people directly, somehow you impact them indirectly. We sometimes display negative behavior from time to time. Toxic behaviors can be passed from one generation to another. Toxic families or toxic family can be within an example of Joseph and uh, his brothers Cain and Abel. Toxic family can be uh, without. Toxic family can be that of the extended family. We see Ammon raping Tama, Lot's uh, shepherds fighting with Abraham's shepherds. We also have uh, other men of God who were toxic, good men, but who were toxic. We see Jonah in Jonah chapter 3, verse number 4. He preaches and his gospel says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He was a preacher of righteousness. He wanted people to be saved, but his gospel was saying Nineveh should be destroyed. We have preachers who are like that, that when we see other people in sin, we so much want to see justice coming upon their lives. You see them living a promiscuous life. You wish that they could uh, have HIV and AIDS and die because they are sinful. You see somebody drinking alcohol and you say to yourself, if only they could get liver cirrhosis and die in their sins because they are alcoholic. You see someone stealing, you, you, you preach the gospel that they may be caught, beaten unto death because they are thieves. Preachers of righteousness, but toxic preachers who wish to see a bad end of the people that they are preaching to. We are so judgmental that we become the standard of salvation for other people. We have watched someone sinning for many years that we cannot believe they can come to Jesus and uh, be saved. There are other toxic people who cause other people to sin. We see this in Exodus chapter 32, verse number 1, where the Bible says, the children of Israel says, come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. We have toxic people who are like that, who cause other people to sin. Holy men of God who cause other people to sin. Holy women of God who cause other people to sin. We need to be careful of uh, such uh, people. We also have uh, even the people we trust and the people we love. They can also become toxic and cause us to sin. Genesis chapter 3 verse number 6 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. The people we love, the people we trust can be toxic in our lives and cause us to sin. First Kings chapter 21 verse number 7 Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up, cheer up. I will get you the vineyard of, Vin of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Dealing with toxic families. 
How do we deal with toxic families? Find a way to talk to them cautiously. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 1, a soft word turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Number two, run away from danger. Don't negotiate on the devil's table. When you see that you are involved with toxic people, run away from them. Don't stay in their presence. Genesis chapter 39, verse 11, one day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by the clock and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his clock in her hand and ran out of the house. Whenever you are faced with danger, whenever you are faced with toxic people, run away with your two feet and don't negotiate on the devil's stable. Number three, refuse to be abused by toxic people. Genesis chapter 39, it says, Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me, but he refused. First Kings chapter 21, verse number 3, but Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. Esther chapter 3, verse number 4, Day after day they warned him, but he would not comply. So he, they reported it to Haman to see whether Mordecai's behavior would be tolerated. Since he had told them he was a Jew, when Haman so that Mordecai would not bow down or pay him homage. He was filled with rage. Number five, ask God to fight your battles. You are faced with toxic people. You are faced with a toxic family. Ask God to fight your battles. First Samuel chapter 17, verse number 45, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. Zechariah chapter 4, verse number 6, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Number 6, ask God to help you realize your sin of being toxic to others. Some people know that they are toxic, while others don't know that they are toxic. Psalm 139, verse 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 51, verse number 10 then concludes and say, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We need God to help us realize our sinfulness. We need God to help us realize how toxic we are. There are some people who are not going to make it to heaven because we have become toxic in their lives, in a direct way or in an indirect way. There are some people who know that they are toxic. There are some people who don't know that they are toxic. But it is God who can help us realize whether we are toxic or not. At times you may tell yourself that you are a holy woman of God, but you are toxic. At times, you know that you are toxic, but you don't know how to make things right with God. You need God to give you the power. David, a righteous man of God, a man after God's heart, was a toxic man, very toxic. He raped Uriah's wife and killed Uriah. He was a rapist, a liar, and a murderer. But when the prophet of God came to him, he realized his sin. 
he realized how toxic he was. And he asked God to forgive him and give him a clean heart and a new heart. In our families, in our homes, we want to live a holy life. A life that is free from being toxic. A life that is free from being evil. A life that uplifts the name of God. As we end this week of the family ministries, I want to pray with somebody. Somebody who is saying, Lord, I know that I'm toxic, but I'm asking that you create in me a clean heart of God so that I may live a holy and a clean life that is free from sin. I'm tired of abusing other people. I'm tired of falsely witnessing against other people. I'm tired of manipulating other people. I'm tired of causing pain in other people's lives. I'm tired of wronging other people. Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. And there's somebody who is also saying, I think I'm holy. I think I'm clean. I think I'm perfect. I don't know if I am toxic. And you are saying, search me, O oh God. Know my heart and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You are saying, Lord, help me today to live a different life. Is it your prayer? Is it your desire? Why don't you stand on your two feet as we pray together? You are saying, help me, O oh Lord. Create in me a clean heart. You're saying, help me, O oh Lord, realize the offense in my life. You're saying, help me, O oh Lord, to do that which is right. I might not know that I'm toxic, but I need help from you. I may know that I'm toxic, but I need help from you. Help me, O oh God. You ask Pastor uh, Enoch Paulino to come and uh, pray for us as the men and women of God have stood to acknowledge their sinfulness, to acknowledge their folly, when we are saying we have failed, when we are saying we have sinned, God, give me the power. God, give me the strength. God, help me to live a clean and a holy life. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. Rebuild me, refurbish me, put something new in me. Help me, O oh God. Let's pray. Grandfather, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us. We thank you because we received this message, this powerful message, just given by your servant, Pastor Colin, as a family, we face the challenge in our day. We need your help, Father, so that we can understand what we need to do, what we should do. In our heart, sometimes we make many mistakes. Our children are suffering. Our spouse are suffering. Our husband, those who are suffering. Please, Father, this morning we are waiting from you to send your own spirit to bless us, to bring peace in our, in our life, so that we can do everything that you are correct. Please, Father, we know that this world is spectacular. We are also sinners, but you are our God for all sinners in this world. Please, bless our families. Bless all pastors here, members, children, so that we can understand that you are willing to help us to be a church family in this world. Amen, Father. 
as we go out, we hope that you follow us. Bless God in the week so that we can do new things. We know that with you everything can be possible. You know our challenge now, but you also know that every family can be in heaven. So we accept your house. Thanks so much for this powerful message. Now, Father, we ask again your Holy Spirit to accomplish your will in this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.